Hello, Stidon here, and today's tutorial is going to be on creating a uniform GUI so that people who are in your group can get the uniform by clicking a button on the side of the screen and it will automatically give them the uniform uh, that they should have on their character. This will work with filtering enabled, which means it will take uh, a bit longer than uh, any other tutorials you might have seen on this. Um, but the great thing about it is obviously it's, uh, it's future proof because robots will be making basically every game have to be filter enabled. Uh, it would seem very soon. So I'm going to make this uh, filter enabled because uh, then, well, it's exploit proof and it means that it's cross compatible with any game, filter enabled or not filter enabled. Okay. So, firstly, we're going to create the GUI that we're going to be using for this. So, just make a screen GUI um, and I'll call it uniform GUI. And then we're going to create a button inside here. Uh, and this button is going to say, is going to be, we can call the button give uniform. Okay. And then in here, we'll put the text take, wait, actually, put on uniform. Uniform. Okay. Okay, so I'm also going to change the font. Obviously, you can make this look like whatever you want. It's not. Uh, it's just whatever you want it to look, to look like. Um, maybe highway. I just put source and bold. Right. Okay. Um, so now I'll change a few more settings. So make it sort of a maybe greeny color. There we go. That's fine. Okay. Now we have a put on uniform button. I'll put it halfway along the screen. You can position you can position this exactly how you want to position position it. You don't have to position it in any specific way. Um, so 0 0.5, 0 0.2. Oops, I did that in size by accident. I accidentally resized it instead of uh, moving it. So I'll just resize that again. There we go. Okay, so we're going to put this halfway uh, along the screen. I'll put it at the bottom of the screen as well. So 0 0.9, uh, 0 0.95. There we go. Okay. So when you click this button, what should happen is you should get the uniform put on. In this case, just for the tutorial's sake, the uniform is going to be this shirt uh, and, oh sorry, this shirt and these pants. Okay. So we're not going to do that yet, but that will be what we're going to do next. Um, so this will actually be uh, a good way to learn remote events and remote functions if you don't know how they work yet. Um, so yeah, because uh, we're going to be using them in this. Okay, so we're going to create a uh, local script, and the local script is going to be called uh, uniform okay, uni local, right? Um, because this is a local script, um, which represents the local side of the uniform giving thing. Because there will also be a server side in the server script service, um, because it's uh, yeah, it's. Um, you can't give people uniform from the local side. You have to give them the uniform from the server side. Okay, so we're going to say local button equals script parent give uniform. Okay, and then button mouse button one click connect. And then in between these brackets, we're going to put function one more bracket, uh, open bracket, close bracket, and then enter here drop a line there and we'll get uh, an end put at the end for us there. So now we've got a function that happens every single time someone clicks that button. We're also going to add a debounce and what this will do is it will uh, make it so they can only put the uniform on once because we don't want them being able to spam the button because that will make lag on the server. So if debounce then debounce equals false. So what we've just done there is we said if debounce is equal to true, which it of course is at the beginning of the script, then carry on with the script, and then make debounce false, which means that if they click the button again, this statement won't go, go through because debounce is no longer true. Okay, so now debounce is false. We're also, we're now gonna start making the server script. We'll come back to the local script once we've done some more of the server script, and then we'll say, we'll call this uniform git. Okay, and here we're gonna define a variable called event. Uh, and this is gonna be a remote event, and to create the event, we'll go instance new, and then remote event. Right. Now, you might have heard of the way you can parent things. So the, you might have heard of the way you can put stuff in places by doing this. So game replicated storage. But you can't do that anymore. That's actually a very laggy. Someone said that on the uh, developer 
uh, forums on Roblox because it was an admin or something. Um, so don't don't do that anymore. You have to do event parent equals game replicated storage. And what replicated storage is, if you didn't know, is a place where both the client and the server, so both server scripts and local scripts, can communicate. They can both access it and they can both edit it. So we're putting an event in this replicated storage, which the local side will be able to see. Okay. And then we're saying, um, uh, we're going to say event on server event connect. And we're going to create a function here called function uh, give uni PLR standing for player and then uni actually yeah uh, we don't want to do that just PLR okay and then up here we're going to define two more variables one is going to be called shirt and this is going to say rbx asset id colon and then two two slashes like this and then we're going to find the asset id of the uh, shirt and the pants so which one was this shirt okay so we're now finding the asset id of the shirt okay so the shirt is here roblox jacket so we're going to see see in the address bar here there's a number so if you just double click on that number and then you right click on it and copy you've now got the asset id for the shirt so you're going to put that just after rbx asset id just here now you've got the shirts asset id now we're going to do the same thing for pants so local pants equals rbx asset id two slashes and then we'll go back to here find the pants and we'll take the number from here copy that and then put it at the end of here end it with a speech mark okay so we've now got the asset id for the shirt and the asset id for the pants so that means that we can put this on the player if we have the player so what, this, what we're doing here is every time this function is fired and we haven't actually fired this function yet, but we'll do that in a second. Um, it will give the person a uniform. And the person is represented by this argument here, this parameter here, player. So we're going to say local character equals PLR character. And what that represents is the player's character in the game. And then local shirt equals character shirt. Local pants equals character pants. Okay. Let me just really quickly check that those are the right names. Uh, here we go. So just to show you what that is, we've got, uh, actually I haven't got any shirts or pants on. So let me just really quickly put some on, just to test, just to show you what, what those refer to. So I just really quickly put these on. Uh, something, Ooh, just put this on, right. <laughs> okay, so now if I play the game. Okay, as you can see here in the player, we've got a shirt and we've got pants. These are both the shirt and pants of the player, right? Okay, so I can go back. Okay, so these this refers to the shirt and the character, and this refers to the pants and the character. All right, so now what we're going to want to do is we're going to say shirt, um, and then we're going to want to use the shirt. So, we, so what we're doing is we're going shirt, shirt template, and then putting the asset ID in there, and we're doing the same thing here, but for pants template. So shirt, shirt template equals shirt because the reason we can do that is because shirt with a capital s refers to this and shirt with a lowercase s refers to character dot shirt okay and then we're going to say pants pants template equals pants with a capital p right because remember Shirts with a lowercase s refers to the character's actual shirt, because we've already defined that. And uh, shirt with an uppercase s refers to the number. And then pants with an uppercase p refers to the number. And pants with a lowercase key, uh, p refers to the character pants. Okay. So we've now actually given the person the uniform. Okay. But we haven't actually fired that function yet. So to fire that function, we're going to want to first go back to the script, actually. And we're going to want to add another line. So we we'll drop a line on the second line here. And on third line, we'll say event name equals uniform give event. Right? And the reason we've done this is so it's easier for the local script to be able to find this uh, this this uh, remote event. Okay? So we're going to have another argument. We're in the local script. Back in the local script again. Um, we're going to have another argument called uh, local 
shirt event, well, actually uni event we'll call it because it's not just shirts, equals game replicated storage wait for child, so that means it will just wait until it can find it, and then we'll call it uniform give event, because that's what we've called it in the server script. Here, the event is called uniform give event. Okay, so now, once we've done uh, all of that, we are going to fire the event using this. Now, when you fire a remote event, the player, if you fire a remote event from a local script, the player is automatically one of the parameters, so you don't have to type it in. So you just say uni event and then fire server. Literally all you have to do. I spelled the event wrong. There we go. Okay. So now let's test this. So we play the game. And we want to put the uniform on, so we just click this. Let's have a look at this what's wrong here. Uh past value is not a function. So 15. Sorry, let's just see what that is. Uh, hmm. Oh, okay, sorry. I forgot to put give uni inside these brackets, that's why. So you need to put you give uni in these because it's saying when the event is fired, trigger this function. I didn't actually put that in between the brackets though. Okay, so let's play again. And now it should work. Okay, so we click this button. And now. Uh, it should have given it to us, but I'm not really sure why it didn't. Let me just check that. Ah, yes, okay. So what I've done wrong is, instead of going, instead of going this ID, what you actually want to do is you want to go to minus one from this ID until you find the uh, texture for the for the fence. So if, as you can see, we minus one from it and we get the texture for the fence immediately. So then we copy this ID and then put it back into this script for pants because it's actually the wrong ID here. And then we'll do the same thing for this one. So we just minus one from this ID. Uh, so that's the wrong one. So we'll just minus another from, the, from this ID. So two instead of uh, three. That's not the wrong one again. So we'll go to minus three from this ID. There we go. So we, now we found the right texture. So now we're going to copy this ID. Hold on, sorry. There we go. Copy this ID. Um, and then we're going to go back to here and we're going to change the shirt's assetity to that. Okay. So now, when we play the game, and we click put on uniform, it now puts on the uniform, and we can't click it again. But if we reset our character, um, click put on uniform, it will put the uniform on, and it does that server-sided, which means everyone in the, in the game will see it. This will work with filtering enabled and non-filtering enabled, just to prove that. I'll turn filtering enabled on now. So, filter enabled. And then put on uniform, we got the uniform on. So, thanks for watching. Sorry about the couple of mistakes I made. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Um, join my Discord server if you have any more comments that you got, aren't getting answered in the uh, YouTube uh, comments or just if you want to join my discord and talk to me or, or and other people there um, so thanks for watching 